In this video, we're going to try to repair this vintage HP LaserJet 2 made in 1988. Let's see if we can get it running. The HP LaserJet 2 was introduced in March of 1987, and this unit was manufactured in May of 1988, making it over 30 years old. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, so after turning it on, it goes ahead and runs through an automatic self-test, and this seems to be going just fine. However, that fan does not sound good at all. That's the squirrel cage fan for the bottom of the case. I may or may not look at that in this video. I plan to do a full restoration in the future. Once the printer warms up, you just run a self-test by taking it offline, then hold the test button for five seconds until 05 self-test appears in the display. Once the self-test completes, the printer will print a status page, or not. It looks like the paper's not feeding. Uh, looking at the top page in the tray, you can see a dark smudge. This means the feed mechanism is turning and the feed roller is just too slick to grab the page. That's good news. Uh, between the self-test passing and an attempted paper feed, I know the printer is mostly running, although I suspect we'll find some other common issues along the way. So we just need to turn it off and unplug it and we'll take it apart. The top cover is attached with eight screws. You'll need a long shaft screwdriver to get to the two screws in the back left corner. I should have taken the toner cartridge out before I started taking the covers off. I knew I wasn't gonna reuse this one, so I didn't. Go ahead and pull the cartridge out, and you always wanna cover your toner cartridges because they are photosensitive. To remove the cover, you have to lift the front slightly, then pry the back right corner out enough to clear the power switch. Swing the back of the cover up to access the display connector and release it, then remove the cover. The front support plate is attached with six screws, along with a ground wire and cable restraint. Once it's detached, you have to lift it slightly, then slide it off to the right. Be very careful not to damage the fiber optic cable, because I've been there, done that. Next, I'll remove the DC power supply. It has three screws, one of which has a star washer to ensure a proper ground. I'll also disconnect the main motor and release the fiber optics cable from its guide before removing the power supply by pulling it straight up while gently rocking. Attached to the DC power supply is the paper control PCA. These solenoids are what release the feed rollers and allow paper to pass through the machine. As I expected, the foam noise dampeners have broken down and become sticky. Depending on how long these are sticking, they can cause paper jams, registration issues, or multi-feeding problems. The registration assembly is attached with four screws. After removing the screws, it just lifts up and out. Finally, we get to the feed roller assembly. It is held in with two screws. It takes a long, skinny screwdriver at a slight angle to access these screws. Once the screws are removed, the feed assembly can be removed through the right side where the DC power supply was installed. I tried cleaning the feed roller with rubber rejuvenator and water, but it was too far gone. I had a new old stock lower feed assembly for an HP LaserJet 2D, so I was able to remove the compatible tire from that assembly and install it on this. Now I need to address the sticky solenoid plates. I removed the paper control PCA from the DC power supply and then removed the spring and plate from each solenoid. After cleaning both surfaces with isopropyl alcohol, I used some very thin self-adhesive felt that I had to replace the foam so the solenoids won't be abnormally loud and clacky. When replacing the paper control PCA, it is important to reattach the safety switch cover and ensure the switches operate properly. I cleaned up the registration assembly using a cloth dampened with water. The cork pad uses friction to prevent the printer from feeding in more than one page at a time. This one was very slick and heavily worn at the edges, so I replaced it with a new old stock one. I found it odd that this printer had a new style AC power supply and fan, but an original ozone filter housing. Shockingly, I actually had a new old stock replacement with a good ozone filter, so I replaced it since the new filters will not fit in the old housing. Before I blow any dust and debris around, I am covering the laser slot with some painter's tape to keep the dust out of the sensitive laser optics. Then I use some canned air to remove as much dust and debris as I can. Once my shop is finished, I will use compressed air, but this will have to do for now. Then I just wipe out the remaining dust with a lint-free cloth dampened slightly with a light cleaner such as diluted Simple Green. In a future video, I plan to do a full restoration and a much more thorough cleaning. Now I'll remove the painter's tape and start reassembly. The feed roller assembly is installed from the right side. 
It's important to make sure the small brackets are properly seated before installing the two long screws. To reinstall the registration assembly, drop the cork pad in under the feed roller, then seat the assembly. You have to make sure that the bronze grounding block is properly seated on the Corona grounding spring. Don't forget the paper guide plate, then just install the four screws. To install the DC controller, you simply seat the connectors on the bottom, then install the three screws. Make sure one of the screws has a star washer for proper grounding. Then just plug in the main motor and you're good to go. The front support plate slides in from the right side around the cables. Reattach the wire restraining clamp and ground wire, then secure the plate with six screws. The cover is installed by standing it on end so you can attach the display cable, then rotate it down into place. Reinstall the eight screws to secure it. Finally, I clean the transfer corona with a cotton swab and alcohol. Be very careful when cleaning the fine tungsten wire. This wire has about 5,000 volts on it when printing to generate the static electricity needed to attract the toner from the drum in the cartridge onto the paper. I did a cleaning of the inside of the cover off camera. After a quick cleaning on the outside, we are ready to see if she works. I doubt even a sealed toner cartridge from the late 90s will work, but it's what I have, so let's see what happens. Don't have paper in the paper tray when you first power it up. The feed roller may not be engaged with the paper control solenoid and it will pull a sheet in if not. Once the printer motor has engaged once, I'll add the paper and run a self-test. And there you have it. The printer seems to work perfectly, but as I feared, the toner cartridge is not cleaning the drum properly. I expected that the wiper blade would be bad after so long and I don't have the supplies I need to fix it right now. In a future video, I will pull apart a toner cartridge and see about getting one working properly. Do you have fond memories of an old printer? Tell me your stories in the comments below. Feel free to let me know what other vintage tech you'd like to see here. If you want to see more from this old printer, I will put a link to a blog post in the description.